Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Chris here with Infotainment.com. Uh, we're back again with our 2019 Chevy Silverado and we have a pretty fun upgrade for um, our truck today. We're gonna be installing the Kicker audio subwoofer as well as the uh, interior speaker amplifier with DSP. We're gonna be going through the whole install for you today, so let's get into it. All right, so what's gonna be included with your kit, obviously is the subwoofer with the amplifier already installed onto the box. You're gonna have your interior amplifier that's gonna get uh, installed behind your rear seat on the passenger side, as well as a whole thing of wires. Um, and I'm gonna show you where all these wires go in a second, but up here we have uh, the fuse connection. This is the connection that's gonna to go to your battery and I wanted to explain this just a little bit because yours may have come without the connectors attached to it or it may have come with the, uh, the connectors attached to it. So I'll go through, when I uh, slip these in there, I'll go through the process to pull these out. If yours did come um, attached, I'll show you how to take that off. Uh, with it in this configuration right here with just the bare wire with the terminals on it, it makes it a lot easier to run from the firewall into the vehicle. So. I'll make sure to go over that for you guys. All right, let's get into it. All right, so where we're gonna start is actually under the hood. We're gonna start on the passenger side here. This is where our battery is located. And uh, this is the side of the truck that we're gonna run our wires through. There's a grommet down here. And because we have a couple wires already ran through there, uh, that front end of that uh, protrusion is actually cut. So if yours is not cut, you have nothing ran through there. It's basically uh, just a piece of rubber. You wanna get a razor blade and you can just slice that and peel it back and you'll have an access hole directly into the vehicle. What we're gonna do is use a zip tie and I'm gonna stick it through that hole that's already there. And now with enough, um, with enough slack on our zip tie, I'm gonna grab our power wires that we're gonna to attach to the battery. I'm gonna grab that end that I was talking about earlier that has the uh, bare terminals on there. And what I'm gonna do is tape this up around the zip tie and then I'll go ahead and pull it through. Okay, so all we have left now is to pull it through and we'll want to leave enough slack so that we can attach it to the top of our battery here, this junction box up here. We're going to attach it to these last two uh, power feeds up here. So we'll go on the inside and we'll pull that through and monitor so we don't pull it too much. All right, so as you can see, our zip tie is exposed right here underneath our glove box area. Um, if your zip tie didn't pop free down here or is, uh, wasn't visible when you push it through, if you just reach your hand right up in there, you'll feel the back side of that grommet and this will be probably just like curled up around there somewhere. You can just pull that out, but you can see we'll pull, we'll pull our wire through. All right, and here you can see we have the end of our wires. I'll go ahead and remove the tape. All right, so now that we got our bare terminals on the inside of our vehicle, we can go ahead and um, attach the uh, connectors here. And when you're sliding these in, if yours was in fact not installed from the factory, what you wanna make sure is the crimped end, this top side here, not the bottom side that's all closed up, the crimped end is aiming towards the clip side. So the side with that little clip on it. And when you slide it in, you'll hear it clip and that's nice and secure. Now, if yours came already clipped in like this one is um, and they were all clipped in and you wanted to remove it to make running that wire a lot easier, what you can do is on the inside here, this is on the top side where the clip is, there's actually a plastic little ledge on the inside there that snaps down and holds that metal in place. So 
may be kind of hard for you to kind of grasp what I'm doing, but if you go in there and you pull up on that little plastic lip, you can pull that uh, terminal free. You see it clips in, you stick your, your pick or any kind of, you can even use a paper clip right up on top and you'll feel that little plastic, uh, that little plastic lock holding that thing in place. But yeah, if you pull all of those up, you can pull all your um, three wires out of your connector to make it easier to run. And then when you're done, you can slide it back in place just like I'm doing. Okay, so with all three wires now clipped into place, there's this little locking tab on the back of the connector that you can snap down. And now this plug is done. We'll do the same thing on this one. All right, now we'll jump back into the engine bay. All right, so back up front at our power wires here, we have enough slack to reach the two posts that we're gonna try and attach to. Uh, but before I go ahead and attach that, what I'm gonna do is pull the fuses out. I'll set this aside. At the end of the install, I'll go ahead and reinstall those. But right now I don't want any of these wires to be live. And I'm going to go around the battery bracket here. And I'll attach it right here. And these are both 13 millimeter nuts, I believe. All right, with our ring terminal secured, I'm gonna pull the slack back just a little bit on these wires. And I'll put a zip tie on it right down here just to keep it looking nice and clean. All right, with our wires all secured with a zip tie, I'm gonna go on the inside and pull the rest of that slack out uh, to finish up the front end here. But in the meantime, I can put the little junction cover back on. And that still gives me access to the fuse, uh, both fuses, so I can put those fuses in after the install is finished. All right, let's get back into the cab and continue with the wiring. All right, so before we get the other wiring harness in here, what I'm gonna do is pull the side uh, moldings off of our car. And I'm gonna start with the one by the seat. That just basically pulls straight up and out. And you need to do that one first because the door sill on this side is overlapped by that piece. So you can pull up on there and pull to the rear on the kick panel and this should pop out. There you go. And we can set that aside. All right, now we should have plenty of access uh, to run our main harness. All right, for the next step, we actually have to install this uh, T harness at where our ACM is. Uh, this is one of the plugs going up into it. It's kind of hard to see under there, but it's literally straight behind our glove box right here. If you look straight up, you'll see these kind of connectors. You'll have to pull the gray one out. This one will go in the gray uh, plugs place and the one that you pulled out will go into here. Basically it is teeing off uh, of that factory connector. Then right next to it is another connector that we're gonna have to pull because we do have to splice into one wire. We're actually cutting a wire and we're gonna um, install a couple of butt connectors that are supplied on this harness um, onto that next connector that's right next to this one. So we'll get into that now. All right, so up underneath the passenger glove box, um, you can see this main, uh, this main factory wiring harness here. It's literally directly above this harness. There's one and there's two. Here's your two plugs that you're gonna try and access. So these come out extremely easy by depressing the center and pulling it straight down. 
as you can see with the other end here we have our gray we'll go ahead and plug that in on this side and this one will plug it back into the ACM and both these plugs are side specific they're keyed differently so you're not going to get them mixed up and plugged into the wrong thing all right we got that one in there now with our other connector here the wire that we're looking for is the green with a black stripe on it and basically from what the instruction says you have to cut this wire and tee off of this wire now on one end of the wire you'll put the connector side which will go towards the connector side you'll just crimp that onto there and the other end that goes back into the harness you'll crimp the harness side too so at the end of the day that's what you want it to look like right there All right, we got our wire teed off. I'll go ahead and plug this plug back in as well. All right, so the next step I'm gonna do here is I brought both power ends of the harness up to the driver kick area, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in to the main power feed coming from the battery. And then we're gonna be left with a couple of ground wires here and these ground wires I'm actually going to attach to this factory ground point right on the inside of the kick panel here. That's a 10 millimeter nut we can pull off of here and I'll slide the two grounds over and we can put the nut back on. All right we got everything attached the way it's supposed to be so what I'll do is I'll just clean up these wires a little bit, straighten everything out, get it looking nice and neat, and then I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this all along the factory loom here, and I'm just going to work my way towards the rear until we get to the rear passenger seat area. All right, so now I'm going to run the wire to the rear and to make sure that it's as clean as possible and I don't have any kind of weird uh, bumps underneath our vinyl flooring, I'm gonna remove this plastic cover here. And this is actually concealing our factory wiring harness. I'm gonna go right underneath there following that factory harness all the way to the rear. And to remove this is four seven millimeter screws holding this on. You have two on the outsides at the corners and if you pull back your flooring you have two more on the inside. Now we can pull this up. If yours is dirty like ours is you can clean this at this time. I'm not going to clean this so I'm just going to put the wires under here and put the cover back on.
All right, now from here, what I'm gonna do is I coiled up this uh, remainder of the harness here and I'm gonna stuff it between the seat back into the rear here. Now I'll take our B pillar panel here, lift it up and I'll kind of tuck this harness up underneath there. And I'll just keep working my way towards the rear. And once you have your harness concealed from this portion, um, you can go ahead and put all these panels back on. All right, let's jump in the back of the truck and continue running those wires. All right, so we got our wire pulled back to the rear of the, uh, of the truck here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off the side molding back here and these panels I'm gonna do the same thing like I did on the front and I'm gonna remove this plastic wire cover here All right, so before I move forward here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling all of our rear pieces to make way for the harness to go down. And I also have to remove the back of the back seat to mount the amplifier up there. So we'll get into that now. All right, so before we uh, start to remove the back of the back seat, I'm gonna pull off this jack, uh, which is just these two 10 millimeter nuts. Uh, you'll need a deep socket or a, a wrench to, to get these off because that bolt is pretty long. But we're going to get this out of the way so we can run our wires behind this vinyl. Once this is gone, we'll be able to kind of fish that through there. All right, with that out of the way, now we have four 10 millimeter um, bolts that we have to remove from underneath the seat area here. There's two underneath the center of the seat right here and on either side um, seats you have one and they're located in the same place. They're pretty deep in there but if you drop it you don't have to worry about it because uh, it's not gonna like get lost back there. It's only gonna drop so far you'll be able to grab it with your hand. But yeah, we'll pull those four out now. Like if it fell just like that, you're totally fine. You can leave it back there. If you don't have a magnet or a magnetic socket, I'll show you a little trick that I do to put the bolt on here when I'm reinstalling it. So I'll show you that afterwards. All right, so next we have to remove all three headrests. There isn't much um, space between your headliner and the headrest, so you'll wanna slide um, the headrest into the down position, and then you can press the little buttons on the side and pull the headrest right out of there. All the buttons are on the passenger side of the vehicle. They're all aiming in the same direction. And same for the center, two buttons, pull the headrest out. Just like that. So we have to pull these little shafts here out and it can be a little tricky. What I like to use is a pick tool. You can use a flathead and a pry uh, tool of some sort, an interior panel tool. Um, if you have leather like ours, you just want to be mindful of the leather and not stab it with your tool. 
but basically you're going to want to put a little bit of pressure on this uh, little shaft here and then aiming your pick tool or your flathead towards the front of the vehicle there's actually a clip on the inside if you go right down in the center you should land on it you'll feel it kind of catch right there so I'll show you what this looks like when I get this out of here there you go so what I was doing is just putting some upward pressure on it and this is the clip I was talking about so inside there you can actually see there's a little groove there that my pick falls right into and then I'm just pulling that clip inwards to kind of clear so it can come out of there and these are going through a um, steel bracket that's attached to your firewall so if you don't take these off the seat's not going to come out so you have to pull all of these out and uh, if you just look for that little clip thing it'll be super easy to get all these out All right, the last step on removing the back of your um, rear seats is three spring clips that attach the top part of the seat. You have these little mounts with these tie straps on them. The clips are located right to the left of each one of these. So you have three of them, one in the center, two on the sides, and on the left sides of all of them is where these clips are. It's a kind of like a little hook in there that you have to bring a, a pick tool you can do it with a flathead but it's a, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt but once you get that little loop in there you can pull up and it'll release the spring um, or release the clip that's holding this latch on i'll show you what that looks like when i get this off but you may fight with this for a little bit until you find what you need to pull there you go so there's one and as long as you don't push that back in it should stay out We got all three of those out. Now our seat is free. Make sure to go around the uh, seat belt. And the rear seat back is actually pretty light. It's mostly it's mostly foam. So basically, what I was doing, sticking my little pick in there and pulling up, and that's basically all you got to do. When you pull up on this and you pull outwards on the seat, that'll release it from this latch here. When you go to put it back in, you're basically going to push the rear seat towards the rear of the truck and it's going to latch back in all by itself. All right, so where we left off with our wires, uh, we left it right in this general area right here. And that is a pretty good spot for us to pull back our vinyl flooring or if you have carpet, you can pull that back in the same way. And I'm just going to fish the wires up through this opening until I pull all of the slack out of this main harness and I can tuck everything else back down the way it was. The amplifier connections are going to be these two plugs here and this is going to go on your rear firewall there with the amp and the two remaining plugs will run over to the passenger side and this is what's going to um, plug into your subwoofer and the sub amplifier. We're going to work these two plugs up behind the vinyl flooring just like that we'll pull the seats down and we'll go ahead and mount that amplifier and plug those wires in all right we got our kicker amplifier in hand and as you can see the mounting plate on here lines up perfectly with these three bolts on the end of this bracket here and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in Just like that. Now I'll go ahead and mount this up there with the provided hardware. And all the hardware is um, 10 millimeter nuts. Got two on top and that third one right at the bottom. Now with our amp mounted, we'll go ahead and pull the rest of our wires through. and over to the passenger side. All 
All right, so we pulled our wires over to the passenger side. You can see we have the sub connector, which is gonna go on this side of your subwoofer and the amplifier connector, which is gonna go on this side. So we'll set that back up in there for now. And what we have to do before we install the sub is remove our spare tire tools. And this is actually where one of the mounts for the subwoofer is gonna go. And this tool pouch will go back over it. We'll set that aside until we get the sub in here. And the other bolt we're gonna have to remove is this one right here. This is an 18 millimeter bolt. They do put Loctite on these, so you may have to break that free if you don't have an impact. All right, now that we got everything out of the way, we'll come uh, back in here with our subwoofer. All right, we got our sub in here and we'll spin it around. The subwoofer aims down and we'll line up the brackets to our pre-existing mounting locations. Looks pretty good. We got access to both of our plugs here. All right, so now that our subwoofer is in place and the amplifier and the connectors um, are on their respective sides, what I can do now is kind of gauge on either side where I want the connector to uh, come out through our vinyl flooring. I'm actually gonna make a little incision. Let's see, maybe one right here into the vinyl flooring for our connector to come through. And I'll put one right on the other side. All right, now that we got both those there, I'm gonna pull this back out. And I'm gonna get our connectors and I'm gonna run it underneath this vinyl flooring. And I'm gonna have each connector come out of these little slits that I made. The subwoofer connector, the black one, will come out of the side that was next to your spare tire tools. So I'll open that up a little bit. Just like that. All right, we got our wires where they need to be. We'll grab the sub and I'll plug in the amplifier side and the subwoofer side. And there's a little red tab on the subwoofer connection. You can slide that up. That'll keep that from vibrating loose. And we can go ahead and reinstall our seat bolt. And they say to torque these bolts to 80 foot pounds. So make sure you do that. And we'll reinstall the spare tire tools. All right, so I went ahead and threw some zip ties on the main harness here, just to uh, try to clean everything up a little bit, get it nice and organized. What you don't wanna do is basically have any of the wires interfering with your mounting holes for uh, the bottom of your back seat. So once you have verified everything is nice and clear and nothing is gonna interfere you from reinstalling your seat, you can go ahead and put your seat back on and that's what we're gonna do now. All right, so the way I'm gonna install the seat is I'm actually gonna lay it down flat on top of the base. Then I'll come in here and I will slide the seat belt around. And then all you have to do is kinda twist it in the upwards position. Make sure you don't trap your seat belts back there. line it up and once it's kind of where it wants to be you should be able to snap in all of those little clips that were a pain in the butt to get to 
There you go. So the top part of the seat is secure. We can put our headrest mounts back in there and uh, we'll throw the four 10 millimeter bolts back in on the bottom. All right, so when you're gonna reinstall these, you just wanna push them down, but to make sure that they're in the right orientation, make sure that little clip that I was explaining earlier is aiming towards the front and or the push button is aiming towards the passenger side. And you should be able to put it straight down and tap it in place. And All right, now that we got the mounts back in, we can go ahead and slide our headrest back down. All right, so before I put the four 10 millimeter bolts back in on the bottom of our seat, um, because I don't have a magnetic tip socket, what I'm gonna do is let's grab a little bit of electrical tape and I'm gonna wrap the socket right here and if you see in any of the other videos if I have electrical tape on the socket this is what I'm doing and basically once you put some tape on there that's not going to go anywhere um, it doesn't have to hold forever you just want it to not fall off as you're working away to the back so that's my little trick to get these to stay on but now we'll go ahead and reinstall all four of these All right, and as a last step, we'll go ahead and reinstall our jack. It goes this way. And clip back on our door sill here. All right, and that wraps up this install. We can go into the hood and install the fuses. All right, we got our two fuse holders up here. We'll just slide these fuses that we pulled out right back in there. Just like that. And then make sure to put the little, little weatherproof cover back over those. All right, we just wrapped up the install. Let's turn it on and see what it sounds like. All right, we just tested it out and it sounds fantastic. The nice thing about this system is it doesn't just give you bass, it actually amplifies the interior speakers as well. Um, it's also uh, pretty cool that you don't have to do any tuning. There's no um, shop visits. You don't have to do anything. You can do this all at home in your own garage. Get a nice uh, plug and play upgrade for your audio system on your Silverado. So if you like this video and you wanna see more, be sure to head back to infotainment.com and if you want to know more about the product, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.